Boys and girls, you are welcome to our tense lesson. Uh, previously, you looked at explorers in Africa with teacher Mubala. There were so many vocabularies that you looked at, for example, exploration and then explorers. I am very sure he told you that exploration is the act of traveling to unfamiliar places or to unknown places in order to learn more about them. He also told you that explorers are people who travel to unfamiliar places to learn more about them. Uh, he further told you that the Portuguese explorers never entered the interior of Africa, but he simply sailed along coastal areas. He also told you that Portuguese explorers mainly came to discover the sea route to India of the Far East. They came to discover a sea route to India of the Far East. And two, they also came to discover trade opportunities with India. But then today, boys and girls, we want to look at explorers that entered the interior of Africa. Explorers, European explorers in Africa. Yes, of course, I don't want to go deep into uh, new vocabularies, but then I want to report to you that for a long time, Africa was often referred to as a dark continent by Europeans. Africa was often referred to as a dark continent by Europeans because little information was known about the interior of Africa. Little information was known about the interior of Africa. And number two, we also say that Europeans knew little information about the interior of Africa. Europeans, Europeans did not have much information about the interior of Africa. Boys and girls, there are for many European countries decided to send in their explorers. For example, we had Britain, German, Portugal, Scotland, France, Spain, and so many others. Those countries sent their explorers to Africa in order to find out the unknowns or mysteries about Africa. Now, we want to look at reasons for the coming of European explorers to Africa. Why did explorers come to African continent? One, to discover sources of major rivers in Africa. To discover sources of major rivers in Africa. Air explorers are much more interested in discovering sources of major rivers in Africa. For example, River Nile, River Niger, River uh, Congo, and so many others. Now, why were they interested in discovering sources of major rivers? For example, last year, candidates were asked to give a reason why explorers were interested in discovering the source of River Nile. One, we can say, they wanted to have full control or maximum control over River Nile. And number two, they wanted to control Nile Valley countries. They wanted to control Nile Valley countries. Nile Valley countries are those countries that, I mean, through which River Nile flows. Nile Valley countries are countries through which River Nile flows. So, boys and girls, they wanted to discover the source of River Nile. Or they wanted to discover sources of major rivers. Therefore, don't forget that River Nile was the major factor for the coming of early explorers to East Africa. And another reason why explorers came to Africa, they wanted to disc, I mean, to, uh, they wanted to study the physical features of Africa. To study the physical features of Africa. Like we had Joseph Thompson, who was a theologist, who wanted to discover the rock systems in Africa. The other reason, boys and girls, they wanted to find out possible chances of trade with Africa. For example, we had John Lander, in West, an explorer in West Africa. When he came to West Africa, he realized that West Africa was a potential trade partner. Therefore, he decided to recommend British companies to start trade with West Africa. So explorers also came to find out possible chances of trade with Africa. 
Their fourth reason, boys and girls, is to win fame and prestige. To win fame and prestige. Now, we also want to look at examples of explorers that came to Africa. And then let's start by looking at explorers who came to East Africa. One we had John Hanning speak. In P5 and P6, you were told that John Hanning speak was the very first European explorer to come to Uganda. Don't forget that. And he's the European, he was the first European explorer to discover the source of River Nile. The other explorers we had, James Augustus Grant, who came with John Hanning speak on his second journey. We also had Richard Francis Burton, who also came with John Hanning speak on his first journey in 1858. We had Sir Samuel White Baker. Sir Samuel White Beckham. Boys and girls, I'm going to be faster here because you looked at this in P5 and also in P6. So Sir Samuel Becker was the first governor of Equatorial Province, you know that he discovered like Albert and so many other contributions. The other explorer, boys and girls, was Joseph Somton, a geologist who discovered the shortest route, I mean the shortest route from the East African coast to Lake Victoria. Uh, we also had Count Samuel Teleki. Count Samuel Teleki. We also had the explorer, the longest serving explorer in Africa was Dr. David Livingstone. Dr. David Livingstone ventured in both Central and East Africa. He was both a missionary, a doctor, and an explorer. The other examples, we have Henry Morton Stanley, who made over three journeys to Africa. We shall look at Henry Morton Stanley and many others in depth. We also had James Bruce. James Bruce, the first European explorer to see White Nine and, and the Lake Tana in Ethiopia. So he's among the few explorers who explored the whole of Africa. We also had Jacob Elihat, a man or an explorer who drew a, the first sketch map of East Africa showing lake system. You learned about, about I mean, looked at, uh, looked at him in the six. Uh, we also had another European explorer known as Johan Rebman. Johan Rebman, who was also an explorer and a missionary. He also had so many great, great contributions. I shall look at, it, at him in depth. We also had Ludwig Kraft. Ludwig Kraft, the one who built the very first mission station at Rabai Pia, and so many other contributions as an explorer and also as a missionary. So Johan Rebman, Ludwig Kraft, and Dr. De De Livingstone were explorers as well as Christian missionaries. Now, we also want to look at explorers that came to West Africa. This is also a special group that decided to venture or to explore or to carry out expedition in West Africa. One of them we had Mungo Park. Mungo Park, of course, was sponsored by African Association Boys and Girls. He ventured in West Africa. He was mainly sent to find out whether River Niger was nav is navigable and to trace the course of River Niger. Unfortunately, it drowned at Busa Falls. It drowned at Busa Falls. It's very important to look at him in depth. Uh, we also have another European explorer known as John Lander. John Lander, a brother of Richard Lander. So you can call them the Landers. So John Lander, Richard Lander, Mungo Park were explorers in West Africa. We also had Gordon Long. Gordon Long. It is written as Lim, but that's long. Gordon Long was also an explorer in West Africa. We also had Dr. Gaspard Mullen. Dr. Gaspard Mullen. We also had Mary Henrietta Kingsley, the only female explorer in West Africa, and in fact, in the whole of Africa. We also, boys and girls, want to look at why most explorers to East Africa visited Bagamoe. Listen. Bagamoyo was the main entry point for most European explorers to East Africa. It's very, very important. I will ask you how Bagamoyo was very important to early explorers. You will say Bagamoyo was the arrival station for most European explorers, or Bagamoyo was the main entry point for European explorers to East Africa. Now, why did they enter East Africa through Bagamoyo? Why didn't they you enter East Africa through any other town? but decided to enter through Bag So boys and girls, Bagamoyo was a very important town. We shall look at it in depth, but then we, all, we shall also look at 
why European explorers visited Zanzibar. Actually, most European explorers to Africa also visited Zanzibar. Now, one of the reasons why most European explorers entered East Africa through Bagamoyo was that Bagamoyo had safer routes. Bagamoyo had safer routes. Number two, the people of Bagamoyo were friendly. The people of Bagamoyo were friendly. Or, due to the hospitality of the people of Bagamoyo. Boys and girls, those are the two reasons why most European explorers to East Africa entered through Bagamoyo. One we are saying Bagamoyo had safer routes, and number two, Bagamoyo, I mean, the people of Bagamoyo were friendly. Or, uh, they were hospitality. I mean, I mean, due to hospitality of the people of Bagamoyo. Now, yeah. Now, boys and girls, we want to look at why most European explorers who came to East Africa visited Zanzibar. How come that most of them who came to Africa had to first visit Zanzibar? What was so special with Zanzibar? One, to get permission from the Sultan of Zanzibar. To get permission from the Sultan of Zanzibar. You know, a Sultan is a title given to leaders of coastal towns. So the Sultan of Zanzibar was the main or the overall control of all other sultans at the coast by then. So these explorers had to get permission from the Sultan of Zanzibar before they came to the interior of Africa. The other reason was to get porters. Yes, they needed the helpers to help them in carrying their supplies. Supplies like food, medical care, and also water, safe drinking water, and so many others. Another reason, boys and girls, to get guides. You know, they had scanty geographical knowledge about the interior of Africa. So they needed some people who knew the geography of Africa, so as they would guide them. So they wanted to get guides, to get porters, and permission. Another reason, boys and girls, to get guards. To get guards. People who would protect them on their way. Remember, the interior of Africa had so many hostile tribes, like the Nandi, the Maasai, and others. So they need guards for protection. Another reason, boys and girls, was to get interpreters. You know, explorers never knew the local language. And little did Africans knew the foreign languages. So these explorers needed interpreters. So one, to get permission from the Sultan of Zanzibar, to get porters, to get guides, to get guards, and to get interpreters. Those are reasons why most explorers East Africa first visited Zanzibar. Thank you so much, boys and girls. Now, we also want to look at the significance of Chief Rumanika to explorers in East Africa. Chief Rumanika, boys and girls, was very and very helpful to early European explorers who came to East Africa. One, he sheltered them. Chief Rumanika, of course, was the chief of Karagwe. So most explorers, especially those who wanted to penetrate into Uganda, had to pass through Karagwe. And the chief, I mean, chief Romanica was very important to them. In a way that one, he sheltered them, and number two, he treated James Augustus Grant. He treated James Augustus Grant. Don't forget that when uh, John Hanning speak came, uh, came to Africa on his second journey, he came with uh, James Augustus Grant. But unfortunately, James Augustus Grant was attacked by malaria and he fell sick while in Karagwe. So it is Chief Rumanika that took care of him. He treated him when he, was, when he fell sick. So it was very important in a way that he treated early explorers. Number three, boys and girls, he fed them. Not only treating them and giving them shelter, he also fed them. He gave them food and safe drinking water that sustained them, for, that helped to sustain them for some time in Africa. The other reason why Chief Romanica was very significant or very important to early explorers in Africa, or rather East Africa, was he gave them guides. Yes, explorers needed guides who would guide them through the way to Uganda and other parts of Africa. So they needed guides. And Chief Romanica gave them guides. Another one, boys and girls, Chief Romanica signed treaties of friendship with, uh, with the explorers. They signed treaties of friendship with explorers. Lastly, he gave them hospitality. He gave them 
hospitality. Give them a warm welcome. Unlike other African tribes that resisted early explorers, who attacked and killed early explorers, Chief Romanika decided to welcome, the, to welcome explorers. What you learn here, you must welcome visitors. You must be a welcoming child. So boys and girls, uh, this marks the end of our lesson. But then we are going to upload notes, you will copy them, and then we, also, we are also going to upload the activity and you will have to attempt it. Thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Teacher Aloy, your very own teacher. I repeat, thank you so much. Stay safe, yes.